let's pin the Easter Bunny. I told you in a previous video that I placed an Etsy order on Anita Yarns. This was it. A little packet of Angora Bunny fiber. It's a fiber I have never experimented with and I'm quite excited to do so. And because next weekend is Easter, I thought this would be the absolute perfect time. Even though I am Catholic and we say that it's actually the bells from Rome that bring the eggs. And the Easter Bunny just hopped into that story. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to spin some bunny. We are going to spin Mary Houdini, apparently. I can only imagine that this bunny had the habit of escaping its cage every now and then. I feel like it's a feisty bunny with a lot of character. I like that. I think this staple length probably is workable to spin on its own. Ah, there are some really short bits in there as well. Um, plan of action, going to comb some Flemish sheep to blend with this. I also only have 40 grams of this Angora, so if I blend it with some wool, I can get more yarn out of it. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Even if it doesn't, we're going to do it. Let's comb this here box of banana. No, there's no bananas in there. It's fluff. <coughs> Let's go. We are going to blend it with something luxurious as Angora, then of course we only want the best bits of the sheep. If you would ask me, I'd say that this is what heaven looks like. So exactly as we did with the Shangora yarn, if you haven't seen this video, then... And also... We are going to first make a layer of sheep's wool, then a layer of angora wool, and then another layer of sheep's wool, so that it's neatly sandwiched in between. If those buns were heaven, then I declare this the seventh heaven. Oof, I am impatient to spin this. And we are going to spin this on Rachel because I think she didn't get much time in the spotlight lately. But because I want to spin a fine yarn with this, I'm going to put the drive band on the smaller whirl. Okay, let's tear off a piece of this bat and let's get spinning As a kid, I actually used to have an Angora bunny as a pet. And all of you Dutch people will know that the name I chose for her is the most original one can think of because she was named Kreisje. But as I was a kid and neither of my parents nor anyone in my family um, 
was a spinner or was into felting or any other kind of fiber arts except for maybe knitting and crochet. The fur of that bunny just went to waste. If I had known as a 10 year old that I would be spinning, I would have diligently kept all the fur of Reisha. Certainly, because I'm a hoarder. Or no, actually I should say I am a collector. I don't know if any one of you is actually curious about this, but the Angora and Sheep blend smells exactly the same as the Shangora and Sheep blend to me. And since the smell tube is not yet invented, you have to take my word for it, of course. And I do have some slight sensory processing issues. But there's also just the possibility that Mary Houdini has bamboozled me and is not a bunny, but a dog. Does look very bunny-like to me though. And after a while I found myself naturally going to a more long draw type of spinning for this fiber. This fiber makes my brain go dumb and just want to make animalistic noises about it. So friends, right now we are in the south of France, we are in the Ardèche region, we are currently in the village of Roche-Colombe. This is actually not important, but what's important is we are in France and I found a pattern with a French name that would be so absolutely perfect for this Angora yarn. It is called Le Velu, the hairy one. I don't know, that just made me happy, made me think, yes, I'm going to make this one. Also, it is a brioche pattern. And I told you in my um, Q&A that this is a knitting technique I haven't tried yet, I haven't mastered yet. So I'm excited to do it. It might completely fail and I will show you if it does because not everything in my knitting world goes perfectly smooth. So yeah, let's get on with it. But right now I'm going to enjoy a little hike I'm going on. The castle was closed. Couldn't finish our hike. My husband is over there trying to find a new thing for us to do. Thank you, Dries. So I finished my ribbing on this Le Velu hat. And you will be very proud of me when I tell you that I did short rows and there is no gaping. I, apparently, am not the worst. And this yarn is the softest. Anyway, now let's figure out the brioche situation. It's a two-color brioche pattern because 
of course, I like to run before I can walk. And as a contrast color, I have this indigo dyed Flemish sheep, of course. No, stay here. Also, have I told you about my uh, project bag already? This is made out of recycled old wool blankets by my cousin's wife. If you are in Belgium, the Netherlands or Germany and you want to support a little business, a small business, handmade.nl We will go pattern. These stitch abbreviations is like I have never seen a knitting pattern before. <laughs> nope, 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 I am already wrong. I need to yarn over as well. Anyway, I'll see you when I've figured this thing out. It's getting cold, I want to go inside. You know, the problem actually just was, I'm sorry for the person cutting trees in the background and I'm not using my microphone. But the problem with my brioche was that, of course, I knit in the eastern uncrossed way. I put my needles in the opposite way than the pattern described. So, but there were some very useful YouTube videos that taught me how to do brioche in the eastern uncrossed way. Um, and now I have got it, I think doesn't look the neatest brioche you and I have ever seen but for my first time I think it's quite okay so instead of slipping my stitches prill wise I have to slip them knit wise or well knit wise in the eastern uncrossed way that is oh and even though I have rinsed this blue yarn like three to like at least two to three times until there was no more blue coming out of it I'm still becoming a smurf yeah. Originally I knitted as the pattern suggested and that was two pattern repeats. I think this would be a great look if I had dreadlocks, but I don't. So this is quite a bit too slouchy for my style, so I am frogging one of the two pattern repeats and I'm just going to make the crown after that first pattern. And yes, I know, my hands are outrageously blue right now. So listen up, here's the story about a little girl who lives in a blue world.
Ta-da! Let's sit down for a moment because I am actually gutted to tell you that this is another disappointing end result. The second in a row. I am so sorry that I'm doing this to you guys, but I will still publish this video as because of my vacation to France, I do not have the time to do anything else. I do hope you will forgive me for this interlude of mediocreness. Like profound mediocreness. And like the hat as you saw in the car, it actually fit me. But since my hands were smurf blue, I put the hat, I'm gonna take it off for a bit. I put the hat in a water and vinegar concoction and when I took it out, it was a giant's hat. And I get such a lump in my throat because of it, because I was so excited about the Angora yarn I spun, about being able now to knit brioche, that that's like a thing I can do now. Probably I should have known better than popping my Angora in that concoction. What am I doing on YouTube? Sometimes I don't even know, but here I am. But I do not want to end this video on a bummer. No, actually I finished this project before we crossed the border to Belgium and I still had some Angora yarn left. And that Angora yarn was enough to make me this headband. And I am going to pretend this is the result of the video you just saw. Ah. Why am I like this? I don't know. I'm feeling really bad. I will put the name of the pattern over here because I cannot remember for the life of me what it was. It was by uh, Drops Design Garn Studio, that's what I know. And I really love it. I have been wearing it for approximately three days now. Yep. Angora is really soft, which was as a project also very, very nice. It was great to sit back, relax, and just do some easy cable work after all that hard brain work I had to do on the brioche. So now I wish you all a very Merry Easter. And if you're interested in some more hat knitting shenanigans that are a little less frustrating than this one, I can recommend these two videos. And if you like these kind of fiber shenanigans, even though they were very frustrating, then maybe like, comment or subscribe. But of course, that is all up to you. And as for me, I will see you in a next video. Bye!